doctor. <laughs> that kind of doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the real doctor. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with Amina from I Am In A Place. Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about her experience as PhD student in lab-based research. I feel like I tried to share my experience with you all, but it's very death-based. Yeah. And I just wanted to share somebody else's perspectives to help you if you're trying to decide if you want to do a PhD or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to link her uh, channel down below mm -hmm. and you can check her out. She has really good tips over on her channel, but I'll let her introduce herself. <laughs> So my name's Amina, um, as Courtney said, I uh, my channel's called I'm In A Place and I guess I began about a year ago, started with PhD vlogs and um, attracted this like PhD community, <laughs> which I didn't know existed. <laughs> um, and now I've graduated, um, I'm working in kind of a combination I teach and I also uh, consult with, in educational kind of fields. So I'm, I'm going to ask her a few questions and some challenges and she's going to okay. give you some tips and what you can expect and things that you should do if you're doing lab-based or thinking about it. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges for you when you just started in the lab? So for me, my, my uh, research project was based on kind of cancer research. So I was working in the lab, like in a very biological kind of tissue culture lab, um, looking at cells and specifically actin myosin proteins, if anyone <laughs> knows they are. Um, so I was looking at those proteins and how they kind of cause uh, or have an impact on cytokinesis when they're deleted or when they're uh, mutated. And um, so for me, a big issue, a big challenge was sort of identifying what I was doing and all the reagents that I had to use because in the lab, especially you know, like I said, the tissue culture lab, you are using hundreds of different reagents and different equipment every single day and it gets really overwhelming, especially in the beginning to just I learn everything that you're doing and know why you're doing it. Because yeah. I think I got into the habit, I think, really quickly of just doing things that I was told to do without That's understanding yeah. why I was doing it. And I think one thing that I recommend is just ask questions and say, okay, fine, I've got these cells. Why? Why? Why not something else? And I think that really helps because it means that when you come to write your thesis, I mean, when, even when you come to read other papers, mm -hmm. you can understand why they've chosen a certain cell type yeah. or why they haven't or whatever. And I think that was definitely a big thing for me, just asking why. Because I, I hate asking why. I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so for me, I, I tend to just read a lot of papers. Yeah. So I think you had to do a lot of that. Was, um, what do you think the split is like? So my field was a field that had very little research in, okay. like, in already. Even though it was cancer research, uh, the topic was to do with the cell cortex, which is a very understudied topic. So there were probably, I would say maybe like 10 to 15 papers, wow. which is nothing. Yeah. Which was a good thing, because it meant that anything I did was new. <laughs> I literally did. Like but it was also a bad thing, because it meant that there was very little that I started on. The ground that I started on was like very, very yeah. sparse. So when I was trying to find out why certain things I did was the way it was, I, I couldn't find out. The only way I could was by asking my supervisor, which you don't always want to do. Yeah. You don't want to seem like you don't know what you're doing. Because but then, yeah, exactly. so when, you, when you come in, you're like, oh my, I, I need to yeah. know everything, but you really don't. So I, I, I assume, well, for me, when I came in, I had to kind of understand how to conduct qualitative mm -hmm. research. But what are some of the tips that you learned or you would share in terms mm -hmm. of getting around the lab and mm -hmm. you know increasing your efficiency? I would say to be very, very organised. And this is definitely, I mean, generally for PhD students, you have to be organised, right? But when you're working in a lab, you need to be even more organised because you're working with things that are out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, you're not just working on a laptop and, you know, paper or just... I mean, not that that's not something <laughs> like... Just, but when you're working with cells that have their own mind, <laughs> in a way, you literally... It's out of your control. So you really do need to kind of plan in advance. So if you know that you've booked your microscope for Friday and you need your cells to be in a certain kind of stage of division or whatever mm. on Friday, you need to make sure you've got those cells ready on Monday and they've grown to the right... And constantly checking that and alongside your other experiments. And wow. there's a lot that goes on beyond what you can control. And sometimes you'll get to that Friday and the cells have died. And you don't know why. That must be frustrating. You don't know why and you just have to go with it. And I think being organised, so making sure that maybe instead of having just one plate of cells, mm -hmm. you've got two or three as a backup. Because the number of times I've like just done one plate and that plate has that, like I've come on Friday and all the cells are floating 
And I'm like, great, I can't, I literally can't do anything about this right now. I can't do anything about this. So just being super, super organized and kind of thinking the worst for everything. Mm -hmm. What could happen, right? My cells could die. So what should I do? I am going to have backup. Okay. What could happen? My reagent could be finished. My media yeah. could be finished. So what should I do? Have like three or four at least in storage that you can get out. Don't wait for the last bottle to order some more, mm. right? Like, you know what I mean? Like always thinking of the worst. <laughs> it gets really tiring. Like that is so interesting because in my research, I kind of just drive everything yeah. up to me. So I, I could get up on the day and I could have a plan to do this and I could just change <laughs> that. And um, that seems, it, yeah. it seems so interesting. You're but also demanding. It's like you're the slave to the cells. <laughs> so <laughs> you do whatever they do. <laughs> wow, like, what, would, what would you say to someone, like, if you're very, like, a controlling person mm. and you're just coming in and you always yeah. have to adapt to things going wrong? You just have to, you just have to change as a person. Mm. I, that was me. I was extremely controlling, like, as in, in terms of what I do mm. and, like, my timings and I'm very OCD and I've got a plan and, you know, I've got structure in my life. Yeah. And then I have these cells that I'm supposed to be growing and supposed to be dealing with and they're not doing like they're told. <laughs> And it's so frustrating that you can't control everything, especially if you're a control freak like me. Yeah, I I just have to go in there and just be learn learn patience. Patience, patience is the one thing that being in the lab taught me. Learn patience. Just learn to accept that it's okay. Like it's gonna be okay. And also learn that things change very quickly. Mm -hmm. So in the morning you could come in and your cells look perfectly fine. By the afternoon, they're not okay. And you can't image with those cells because the results that you get will be you can't use them. You can't you can't trust those those results. So you basically you're you're better off just giving up not giving up as in like giving up that day of microscope bookings and just say, you know what, I will do it tomorrow than waste time imaging mm -hmm. just to image when you can't trust those cells anyway. So yeah, just always having a backup plan, always knowing that if that doesn't work, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. If if my cells are dead today, I will write this or read this or try this out. Okay. I'll have a backup. Always plan. having a plan that you like something that you're doing on the side. Yeah. So always have like parallel activities that you're trying. You're basically doing. I, I thought my was <laughs> dynamic, but sounds like a lot. It's so frustrating. No, no. It gets, you get to the point where you get really frustrated. Yeah. Um, and I think that happened for me and my friend. We started at the same time. We were doing the same projects, pretty much. At the end of like summer of the first year, yeah. the end of the first year, so twelve months in, mm -hmm. we both felt like giving up. How did you recover? What did you do? I think it was the summer, and yeah. everyone was on holiday. Basically, nothing was working. <laughs> no mice were working. Everything was contaminated, and I think we both were just like, we don't want to do this anymore. Um, but then September the happened. Like it, it, yeah, no, literally. And then September happened, and everyone came back, and then things were okay, and then we kind of just went back into the flow. <laughs> but luckily, we had each other, yeah. so we would like just cry together and just like go and have like you know drink together so mm -hmm. that was nice I don't know if I was by myself but I'd still <laughs> be there but um yeah I, just, I think just like trying to think that this the time will pass and you will be okay at the end of it I'll be okay at yeah end. yeah I I feel like there's a lot more planning mm -hmm. that goes into lab based research time and it's a desk page research, yeah. The, what I did was I print out a like month planner, so yeah. you can just go and Google and just search for like January month mm -hmm. PDF. You can print that out and um, you just stick it on your desk, uh, in, in your on your bench in the lab or wherever in your office, and just plan every single day. So today, Monday, take out the cells. Tuesday, infect the cells. Wednesday, change the media. So like literally list it every out. Day. Yeah, especially if you have like parallel mm -hmm. experiments. Um, I was using three or four different microscopes, so I had different experiments with different microscopes. So just literally planning out everything, and don't keep things in your head. Right. Put it down. Yeah. You've let go of it then, mm -hmm. and it's less burden on you. I think. Yeah. yeah. I think because I did a video on typing versus writing. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen that one. <laughs> because. I, when I was typing, I always felt the need to kind of sound academic. Yeah. And I when I was writing, just, 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 just put down the idea yeah. somewhere. And somewhere you know you're not going to lose mm -hmm. it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another tip. Mm -hmm. Write everything down. Everything. I'm so, Even the thing that you think you never need to write down, write it down. Write it down. I had 
a crutch, which was my notebook. Mm -hmm. And I had a notebook that was like my lab notebook, and it just it never left the lab, it was just always in my lab, um, that I wrote everything down on. And I think in the end I had like maybe two or three in a year. It was not the big, it was like an A4, yeah, uh, A5, 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 yeah. yeah. And I wrote everything. So whenever I walked around in the lab, even if I was going from here to the other side of the room, I had a notebook. Because someone is going to say something to you that will be really relevant and that you're going to want to remember, but don't want to annoy them again to say, oh, what was it you said? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so literally right. writing down. And I think this is really important, especially in a kind of environment where you're using different reagents because there are so many different reagents and you need to use different concentrations and different, like, for different cells or different timings. And someone in passing will just say to you, use 10x concentration in 2ml in that dish with that. And, you know, it's just gone in, yeah. in a couple of minutes. So just write everything down. And not only does that mean that you... Um, are recording it so you can actually do it but it also means that when you come to do it next week yeah. you've got that information there and you'll you will really like you know appreciate that when maybe you've had a long day you're tired and you don't want to have to go and chase someone up to find some information out and it's just there for you it just makes your life so much easier, so much easier. i think mm -hmm. from, from, from my perspective just writing it down because i always have these ideas that i want to explore mm -hmm. And if I don't write it out thoroughly, yeah. like it's, it's just, it's just going to yeah, <laughs> go. Literally, as fast as the idea comes, it goes. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't give it the time yeah. and you focus on something else, it'll it just disappear. <laughs> Do you have any other um, organisation tips? Like, did you use bullet journaling or anything like that? Yeah, I think in presentations, so like in my lab, we had weekly presentations where we rotated. So every week someone else would present. Mm -hmm. So by the time it got around to you again, you'd be like maybe five or six weeks. And in that time, you've done nothing new, but you have tried some experiments. And I think that was quite a nice way, actually, of kind of keeping a record of what I've done and what what, what worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. Because most of the, the, the lab meetings were, hi, guys, nothing's worked, <laughs> but this is what I've done. <laughs> and it's really nice to be able to, like, just have that there. And then you can see, and as, like, for example, as the people, the other members are mm -hmm. telling me, giving me tips, I'm writing it down in the notes of the presentation. So... By the end of it, I've got like 20 slight different presentations that have info that has kind of like incremented and okay. with questions that I've thought about as yeah. I've gone along. I recorded a lot of meetings as well, like on my phone. On your phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do that So as well. I remember in the beginning, I'd have meetings with my supervisor. But you would forget stuff that they asked. A one hour meeting and he's giving me so much information. Yeah. So it got to the point where I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, like, take this in you. Yeah, I just I just got my phone. I used my phone and then after I transcribed it. Same. I got my phone, I would just press record, put it down there as he's speaking, mm -hmm. and then listen to it later and just read yeah. it. Yeah, because we write. Honestly, you can't kind of always capture everything that they say. No. And sometimes you miss a very important Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or later on, because a lot of times when, when they speak to you, they tell you the justifications mm -hmm. and they give you the actual in-depth reasons why you're doing whatever yeah. you're doing. and you just don't remember it. That's true. <laughs> record your record your meeting. Record your meetings. <laughs> and your thoughts. Did you get did you get permission? I just yeah, I, did you. I, just I think my <laughs> second meeting because my supervisor's from up north. Okay. So deep accent. Uh, well. Second meeting, I was like, can I record? She's like, yeah. Sometimes I'm not, and she's asking, oh, do you have your phone? And I'm like, I just recorded. Oh, yeah, I just need to know what you said. <laughs> One of the challenges as PhD students, because mm. your project is so long yeah. and kind of repetitive, especially in the lab, is measuring your progress. Mm. How did you assess whether you were on track or how do you know when to stop? You're never on track. A, you're never on track. And B, you're never going to stop. Yeah. Unless you're forced to, which is when you have to move something in a thesis and when yeah. your funding runs out. <laughs> when you know your funding is running out. That's when you're going to stop. Six months? I know that we need to write up now. No, that's true. That's when you're going to stop. I, like, the, you're, you're never going to be on track because what's the track? The, you, set, you set it up. It doesn't yourself. exist. Yeah. You know, you start off, there's a starting point, mm -hmm. and then you're just like that, literally, like, I, for the whole three years. I saw this meme and it was so perfect. It was like white, like a straight line, yeah. white thing, and all the ditches. <laughs> yeah. is there's exactly. no track. So don't ever think that you need to be on track. Mm -hmm. What 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 track? You, according to who? Yeah. There's no track. And B. Oh yeah, no one to stop. Again, you're not going to say I want to stop because by the time you've got to the third year and you're like in the depth of your research, mm -hmm. you don't want to stop. 
Like, if I could, if I could be paid for another year to do it, like, in, as a PhD, you I would have done, done it, for sure. Yeah. Because, I, like, you, at that point, you know, you love your project, hopefully, <laughs> and, you know, you're kind of, um, if you spend another year, you probably get a lot more done. Uh, so, I would have loved to do another year. But then, I could do another year again, and then yeah, I could do then. another year, and it's just never ending. So, just stop after like three years I think, three years, three and a half years. Yeah. It more than like that. how do you streamline that work? Because when you're doing mm-hmm. maybe, I don't yeah. know how it is, but you may get a certain yeah. result from one thing and, mm-hmm. and then you kind of have an idea to test again in yeah. some other way. So, um, so what, what you do is like kind of around the two and a half, three mm-hmm. year mark, you have a meeting with your supervisor and you're like, okay, well, I, I need to stop writing in, in, in about six mm-hmm. months what can we have finalised and also thinking about can I publish this research so do I have all the western blots for all the proteins I've used the western blot shows that the protein is actually there Mm -hmm. in your cells which is pretty much the most fundamental thing you need when you're presenting that in a paper without that you can't publish so like making sure you've got them Mm -hmm. making sure you've got replicates Replicates, making sure you've got all the info that you need, yeah. so that you don't get to the, the the six month mark, and then you, you're you're like crap, I don't have X, Y, and Z. So just trying to find a point where you've closed the doors, and you don't they're not like half open. You've okay. Closed them. You can continue, mm-hmm. but for what you've done, they're closed. Yeah, just make make sure yeah. you analyze you what, can what you have. Yeah. What you have, you can make you can write a concluding statement based on what you have, is kind of where you stop. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to start wrapping up, but yeah. what is your final tip to somebody thinking about doing a lab-based research or a PhD in general? I would say, you know, if you're passionate about a subject, um, to go for it, especially if you're the kind of person that loves learning and loves exploring something in extreme depth, <laughs> I would say to go for it. If you're someone that loves to be organised and loves to collaborate and loves to communicate mm-hmm. with others, I would say totally go for it. It isn't for everyone, but it's definitely something that I think would suit anyone, especially if you're if you're interested in a particular subject. Anything, any you can do a PhD on literally anything. Yeah. But true. my key thing would be to don't worry, don't stress out. You'll be fine in the end. I promise. I know. A lot of people are worried probably about different things in their PhDs and I promise you'll be fine and if you need to any if you need help or want to talk to anyone, feel free to message me. Um, and uh, my email address is in the link in the bio of all of my videos. And so I'll yeah, feel yeah, free to message me. I have quite a bit of experience of like talking to other people and kind of coaching and stuff. Finally, what has been the biggest benefit or most beneficial thing from your PhDs? A skill, anything like that? Um just, just knowing that I, 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 would, I had the privilege of being able to experience research and, and education to that extreme yeah. level, not everyone gets the chance to dig into something that they love to that depth. Yeah. And being able to do that whilst getting paid, obviously it's not that much, but whilst getting paid and whilst being in an in a academic environment, I think that's such a privilege. So. In terms of what I love about it, that would be it. Just be having that yeah, experience. that experience and, and just being able to say that I'm an expert in this field, even though it's such an irrelevant little field. <laughs> you'll, you'll be an expert at the end of it. You'll be an expert and you'll be called doctor. Yeah. That's always good. <laughs> so it's fun to be like, what? Are you a doctor? Uh, not, not that doctor. <laughs> that kind of doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the real doctor. <laughs> but yeah. It was so lovely was having you on the channel. Uh-huh. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hope you enjoyed seeing Amina, and please check out her videos. We did a, a video on Amina's channel with some tips, so you can check that out yeah. as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>